Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 8.3b. This is the cardiac cycle. Now, as you know, our heart beats at 75 beats per minute. And if you do the maths, right, 75 beats per minute, one minute is 60 seconds. Ooh, is that pumping now? Right, 60 seconds divided by 75, that would give you 0 0.8 seconds, right? So one beat would take around 0 0.8 seconds. And one beat, which is not doo but it's doo -doo, right? Doo -doo is one beat, right? That is actually one cardiac cycle. So the average length of that is 0 0.8 seconds. Now in 0 0.8 seconds, a very short time, what is going on in your heart? Well, as it's beating, they are actually going through three different phases, right? In that 0 0.8 second. Number one is atrial systole. Number two, ventricular systole. And number three, diastole. So what is systole? What does it mean? Systole means contraction or pumping. Diastole means relaxation or filling. So when we talk about atrial systole, we really mean that the atria contracts, right? And when we talk about ventricular systole, we are saying the ventricles contract. These two words mean contract. And mind you, the atria and the ventricles do not contract at the same time, which means if the atria is contracting in the atrial systole phase, right? If the atria is contracting, then the ventricles are relaxing. And this is the same for ventricle systole, right? So ventricle systole, the ventricles in turn are contracting, however, the atria is relaxing. How in diastole? Diastole is a phase where everything relaxes, so both the atria and the ventricles relax. Okay, so the question I get is, okay, Miss, how do you remember this? Well, I'm a very visual person, so I hold up my hands like this. Well, usually facing me but hold up my hands like this in front and this top hand i use to represent the atria and the bottom hand i use to um, illustrate the ventricles right so we have atrial systole where the atria is contracting so i squeeze my hand and the ventricles are relaxing and then the opposite occurs right the ventricles contract and the atria relaxes so the hand on top relaxes here then diastole both relax. And you can see this motion as well in this animation right here. Okay, we can see first the atria contracts, then the ventricles, you can see it cinch in, and then the whole thing expands and relaxes. And we're going to see how this affects different things, right? We're going to look at this in a table. So atrial systole, what happens? Now the atria is contracting, as we said, systole means contract, and the ventricles are relaxing. And therefore, what valves open? The atrial ventricular valve, which is the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve, we're just going to use general terms right here. These are going to open, allowing blood to for, flow from the atria into the ventricles. Now, um, what valves are closed then? Now, because of the pressure, you know, due to contraction of the atrium, these are going to shut the valves in the, um, in the vena cava as well as the pulmonary veins. And that's because uh, the heart, the valves are going to close to prevent the backflow of blood, you know, out. So that doesn't happen. The valves close and ensure no blood can like, flow there. Now, what is also closed and not open yet, just yet, is the semi lunar valves here. They are not open just yet until the next phase, which is ventricular systole. In ventricle systole, uh, the ventricles contract. Systole again means contract, and the atria relaxes. So you can see how um, in this phase, the the ventricles are contracting and we can see here that the valves, the semilunar valves that were previously closed here, right, and prevented backflow, they're going to open 
and blood can travel from the ventricles into the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So the oxygenated blood goes into the pulmonary artery to the lungs and oxygenated blood flows from the left atria to the aorta, right? So that is due to the ventricles contracting again. Now, what closes, as we can see here, once the ventricles start contracting, is actually the atrioventricular valves, as you can see right here. Okay, this is the actually first few things that would happen. The atrial ventricular valves would close due to the pressure, and then the seminolunar valves are gonna open. Now, this atrial ventricular valve closing sound is what you hear when you put a stethoscope to the chest. Okay, I remember when when you mimic a heart sound, you go like, doop, 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 doop. okay, like in English words, it's kind of strange. The atrial ventricular valves, we say it produces a lup sound. It's lup dup, lup dup. So that's lup. And then what is dup? Dup is actually what happens next when the semi lunar valves close. Okay, so what happens during diastole, which causes the semilunar valves to close? Now, both the atria and ventricles will relax here. There's nothing that's contracting. Now, what valves will close? Uh, sorry, what valves will open first? So, sorry. So, the valves that will open would be uh, these valves here at the vena cava and pulmonary veins. And these are going to allow the... Um, blood to trickle into the ventricle. So it flows from the vena cava passively into the, uh, into the atria, both the vena cava and pulmonary veins into the atria. And then that kind of trickles in the ventricles, not much, just a little bit, just passively. And because of the pressure difference, okay, in this case, um, the the pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary artery will be higher because, you know, they have a lot of blood now, right? However, the ventricles are relatively empty and therefore you can see the semilunar valves here close. And this, as we said just now, produces the dub sound. So, lup, dub, lup, dub, right? Lup is the atrioventricular valve closing. Dub is the semilunar valves closing. You know, I just mentioned a lot about pressure. So let's go through a little bit about differences in pressure. What happens and what in what area the pressure is the highest? So in systole, we see that atria contract, right? So we know that already. So what is pressure doing? Now, when the atria contract, it makes sense if the atrial pressure is way higher than ventricular pressure. Okay, ventricular pressure will be lower because it's, you know, not contracting, it's relaxing. But as blood fills the heart, there will be an increasing pressure. Now, pressure in arteries, in this case, is quite counterintuitive, but you have to realize that this is a cycle. They will still have some blood in the arteries, right? So it's still very high pressure, but it's slowly decreasing as the blood kind of travels out to the entire body but never be empty, okay? It will just, you know, move along, it flow along. Now, how about the ventricular systole? So ventricular systole is when the ventricles contract, right? Systole, ventricles contract. So what's happening with the pressure? And this would make sense. Like what would make sense would be, ventricle pressure will be way higher than our atrial pressure. Again, the ventricles are contracting. Therefore, higher pressure. Okay, and we can see here how the valves close, the atrial ventricular valves close as a result. Now, the pressure, okay, is in the, vent the ventricle pressure <clears throat> at one point will also be higher than the pressure in the arteries, causing the valves to be able to open and then the blood can flow from the ventricles into those arteries. So yeah. Now, how about diastole? What's happening then? Now, all the chambers are relaxed, right? So the pressure in both the atria and the ventricular will be low, right? However, 
the pressure in arteries will be higher than ventricular pressure, and this causes the semilunar valves to close. Right, you can see it close right here and here. Why? Because there is a lot of blood in those arteries right now, and there's a sudden decrease in pressure because the atrial and ventricles relax. And therefore, you know, we can see here how it's labeled. The pressure is high in the arteries, but also slowly decreasing as the blood flows to the entire body. Okay, so let's say let's talk about it in general so changes in blood pressure atrial and ventricles kind of changes with the stage of the cardiac cycle okay and usually the left side of the heart would have a higher pressure and a larger difference in pressure compared to the right side and that's because that's because well the left side of the heart pumps blood to the entire body therefore there's higher pressure it's a thicker muscular wall to begin with, so higher pressure, larger differences in pressure as well due to its structure. Now, in general, to summarize what we just said just now, atrial pressure is relatively low because it has thinner force and exert lesser force. And so atrial pressure is generally low compared to the others, but it does increase during atrial systole. Ventricular pressure increases during ventricular systole. And obviously, aortic pressure increases during ventricular systole as well and is highest among the three during diastole. And you might be wondering, okay, we just saw this in table form. Why do we have to repeat it again? Because it's a very important concept which we are about to put into a graphical form. Ta-da! This is the graph that you need to know. And it's based on the principles we just talked about just now. So it's actually the same thing we talked about, but it looks daunting. But let's not worry about it. Let's go through each and every part. So this is when atrial systole starts. And we can tell because atrial pressure increases here. And you can see atrial pressure is relatively low compared with three different um, parts here. Okay, usually imagine on the left side of the heart. So yeah, this is the left atrial, by the way. Anyway, as you can see here, it's rather low because again, here's a thinner wall, so it's usually at the lower side. Uh, however, you can see increase here. So you know atrial systole has started right there. Now, how about ventricle systole? And we can see this definitely when ventricular pressure increases way too high all of a sudden. That is ventricle systole. This is the left ventricular pressure as well. Again, we always measure the left because it has higher pressure. It's easier to measure, has larger differences as well. Now, at which point does ventricular systole stop? And it's at this point, this little dip here. And this little dip is caused by when the semilunar valves close. And that is the mark of the starting of diastole and of course the cycle kind of repeats itself again and you can see at the end here there's a little increase in atrial pressure again and that would be atrial systole all over again okay i know that wasn't clear enough let's do this in a more nice form okay so let's number this and go long so part number one this is point number one where atrial systole starts right and again atrial systole atria is contracting and there is an increase in atrial pressure here and you can see here um in the green line for ventricular pressure it's starting to increase as well because the blood is entering the ventricles causing the pressure to increase a little bit now at this point here atrial ventricular path valves close and that's because this is the point where the ventricles start contracting during ventricular systole so the av valves close and with enough pressure after a while, as ventral contracts, which is number four, the semilunar valves will open at this particular point here. Now, at this point, you can see how the ventricle systole has, sorry, the ventricular pressure 
is increasing and you can see the aortic pressure increase along with the ventricular pressure and that's because the blood is flowing into the arteries but at one point where a ventricle the ventricles uh, starts to relax a little bit we can see the semilunar valves close because there's now a pressure difference between the aortic pressure and the ventricular pressure so semilunar valves close here to prevent any blood flow and at this point um, this point it relaxes okay the ventricles in the atrium relaxes and therefore um, diastole begins and you can see the ventricle pressure drops crazily and that's because they are empty and relaxing um, and the atria is too now at this point the av valves actually open again because well there is little pressure difference between the ventricles and the atria so not much pressure difference here two lines have come together again and therefore hey um, the blood starts to fill atria again and passively flows into the ventricle it kind of trickles into the ventricle and you can see a slight increase just slight incline of the line here because the blood is slowly starting to fill the atria. Now maybe you'll be asking, okay, what is this slight bump here and the slight bump here? And this is actually the slight increase in pressure when the valve closes. So AV valve close, slight bump increase in pressure. Serena valve close, slight increase in pressure as well. It's kind of like when you slam a door, yeah, you feel that pressure, that wind a little bit. Yes, it's something like that. There's a pressure difference when something closes. So yeah, this is the graph describing the cardiac cycle. Again, it's actually the same things we just talked about in the table, but put into a graphical form. I'd like to remind you that these are all the left side of the heart, left atrial pressure, left ventricular pressure, and the aortic pressure, which is on the left side of the heart. And that's because this uh, side of the heart has a greater pressure compared to the right. Also, it has a greater pressure difference. So you can see this really nice whoop, roller coaster wave thing. So yeah, that is the cardiac cycle graph for you. Now, just a reminder that, hey, that lup dup sounds are the AV valve closing. And you can see the heart sounds here uh, plotted on the same uh, x-axis as, same axis as this graph. And you can see how the AV valves cause some noise as well. It's a closing of the seminal valves as well. The closing not only causes a pressure difference, slight increase in pressure, but hey, also some sound, just like when you slam a door on your parents. <laughs> so yes, that is the cardiac cycle. This is a little um, another summary as well. Same graph, just added one more graph here and multiple other bits. Uh, and this just tells us the same thing. Same graph here. We can again plot out where atrial systole starts, where ventricle systole starts, which is just right before this big increase, and where diastole starts, which is when um, there is an increase in a aortic pressure. So you can map this out and you can observe the ventricular volume. Now, ventricular volume, so just the ventricles, is relaxed in atrial systole. So you can see here how it's quite large. However, during ventricular systole, you can see that the volume decreases uh, rapidly. And this is because ventricular volume drops crazy during ventricular systole. And then during diastole, it kind of relaxes again and the ventricular volume increases again. And it kind of has an opposite shape compared to the ventricular pressure. And that kind of makes sense because again, when it contracts, the ventricular volume is low. We can also see here a little nice cute um, like writings about what valves are open and closed. And AV valves are 
open during atrial systole, close during ventricle systole, and then open again later on in diastole. And we can see for aortic and pulmonary valves, which are basically um, semilunar valves, we call it in general. These are closed during the atrial systole, uh, but open during ventricular systole, and then close again during diastole. So you can see here, AV valves and seminal valves do not open are not both open um, at the same time that much, yeah? Anyways, this is pressure of the blood in the heart, right? So this is inside the heart. There's aortic pressure, there's left ventricle pressure, and there's like left atrial pressure, okay? So this is in the heart. But what happens when the blood reaches the aorta and then exits from there how the pressure look like and it kind of looks like this and you have seen this graph before like early in this chapter when we talked about the arteries the capillaries and the veins and this is actually what happens inside there right there's a high pressure when there is a cyst we call it systolic pressure so this is when there is ventricular systole all right systole and this drop happens when there is diastole and the blood is actually flowing away from the heart so that's called systolic pressure and this results in pulsatile flow so the pressure pulsates due to ventricle contraction yeah and yeah um, normal human blood pressure is usually between these Two, you can see both the readings here on the little uh, Omron kind of um, blood pressure machine here. And it's usually between 80 and 120 milligrams of mercury. So this is the pressure that is normal. Um, the mean arterial pressure is here, but it doesn't, it doesn't stay there. It just fluctuates up and down. Now, revision time. What? helps smooth out pulsatile flow, what helps these like undulating pressures become less and less so and become a more consistent flow. And you have to credit that to the elastic fibers inside your arteries, which allow, which can stretch when, when there is a high pressure and can recoil during a low pressure. So yeah, this helps smooth it up a little bit um, and does not cause it to undulate, to pulsate all the way to the veins, right? It just smooths it out slowly, elastic fibers. And with that, we come to the end of our talk on cardiac cycle. We will talk about the nervous pathways next and we label that subtopic control of the heartbeat. Stay tuned for that. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.